everyone, now we will discuss on the topic pollution impacts or consequences. In the last class, we have seen that due to the ever increasing population growth, large number of pollution or pollutants are getting entry into environment in air, in soil and in water and those are entering into the human body through different sources and also different living organisms are being affected. Not only that overall environment or the global environment are also being affected due to the pollution and in this class we will see how these pollutants are creating different consequences on the human health and on the environment. And the topic or sub topic for today's discussion are impact due to ground water and surface water pollution, impact due to air pollution, impact due to soil pollution and impact due to noise pollution and also the ozone layer depletion and global warming. So, these will be the sub topic for today's discussion and first we will see how the water pollutants impact on the human body as well as on the environment. So, in the previous class we have seen that water has different quality parameters like say physical, chemical, biochemical and microbiological parameters and these are listed here already in the previous class we have discussed about these and uh, all these parameters are very important and we need to maintain the quality or the values of these parameters within certain limits as per the CPCB guideline that is Central Pollution Control Board's guideline for different types of water like say drinking water or say uh, industrial waste water after treatment it will be discharged on the surface water or sewage water or irrigation like this. So, we have seen that. So, uh, at first we will discuss impact due to ground water and surface water pollution and out of different parameters this biological parameter BOD is very very important BOD and COD particularly for surface water, so river water, canal water etcetera. Because you see here in this graph if the waste water that is the sewage from the domestic sector gets entry into the river stream say here in this point. So, then immediately it will be having some impact, how the impact on the water quality, how because it will be having more BOD COD than the upstream water and then when it is entering here it is mixed and then its BOD concentration increases. And dissolved oxygen concentration is say uh, if it is saturated then we can say uh, it is say 8 to 9 ppm. So, this DO will start to decrease immediately because microbes are present in the water they will try to uh, consume the organic compounds and gradually organic compounds will be consumed and DO requirement will increase, dissolved oxygen requirement will increase and availability of dissolved oxygen will be decreasing. So, that way oxygen sac graph this is called the oxygen concentration will reduce and organic concentration is maximum here. So, that will also be reduced here with time. So, as a result what is happening with time as we go downstream of this location then the DO concentration will be gradually decreasing. And here two phenomena is there one is oxygen dissolved in water is consumed by the microorganisms for the oxidation of the organic compounds. So, DO is uh, reduced other way there is some equilibrium with air that is always there is some diffusion of oxygen from air to water phase. So, oxygen concentration is increasing gradually with time. So, uh, as we go downstream gradually the oxygen is entering into the water with the same rate, but 
oxygen requirement for the degradation is initially increasing, but gradually it is decreasing, because the all the organics will be consumed at a certain time and then the, the oxygen requirement will be reduced. However, oxygen diffusion from air to water will increase and ultimately again it will reach to the saturated value of DO. Now, this is called oxygen sag curve and this is a natural phenomena which happens in the river stream. Now, within any position here, if these pollutants are higher in concentration and within short distance number of wastes are entering into the river stream. So, river will not get certain time for its uh, uh, revival. So, as a result, along the length we will be having some locations where the dissolved oxygen will be very, very less. And if it is lesser than say 2 ppm, the living organisms cannot survive. So, this is a this is an impact. So, to all the living organisms, because of these pollutions, the living organisms may not be able to survive in aquatic environment. Depending upon the concentration as well as the toxicity of the pollutants present in the stream, so the severity will be different. Now, you see this figure shows the fishes are floating after dead, dead fishes are floating. Okay. So, may be one possible reason is that dissolved oxygen is reached such a level that the these fishes are not able to survive. That may be one reason, may be other reasons also. So, this is one impact due to the depletion of dissolved oxygen concentration in the water due to the entry of contaminated water stream into the river stream. Now, uh, this is for surface water one example, we will give some examples for contamination in ground water. So, ground water contamination particularly with arsenic and fluoride, these are very, very important topic today. Not only, should, not only arsenic and fluoride, many other pollutants are available in the ground water and those are also creating many negative impact on human health. So, we will be discussing those gradually. So, this we are discussing here the impact of arsenic. So, arsenic poisoning or arsenic have different effects like say nerve damage and then skin damage and then increased cancer risk, lung cancer, bladder cancer, kidney and liver cancers and, and circulatory problems in skin. So, these are the major impacts due to long term consumption of arsenic contaminated ground water. So, now we are going to see the impact of fluoride contamination as well. In the previous class we have seen that large part of the world are having the fluoride contaminated ground water and different types of health impacts are there. So, these two important health impacts are like skeletal fluorosis and, dent and dental fluorosis. So, this is because of again the excessive exposure fluoride contaminated water that means long term consumption of fluoride contaminated ground water. So, these are the bone diseases so, you see how severe these are. So, this is for some impacts due to contaminated ground water. Then heavy metals may be present in the ground water. So, if it enters into our body when we use it as a drinking purpose without any treatment. So, then it can also uh, create different types of health problems. Like heavy metals toxicity can have several health effects in the body. Heavy metals can damage and alter the functioning of organs such as brain, kidney, lungs, liver and blood. So, heavy metal toxicity can either be acute or chronic effects. They may be if in higher concentration they may show immediate impact and if lower concentration but for long term consumption they can give acute impact. So, now long term exposure of the body to heavy metal can progressively lead to muscular, physical and neurological degenerative processes that are similar to diseases such as Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis, muscular dystrophy and Alzheimer's disease. So, these are some example of diseases caused due to the heavy metal contamination. Also chronic long term exposure of some heavy metals may cause cancer it has been observed that eta eta disease and epidemic of bone fractures in Japan was due to cadmium contamination and the symptoms of manganism 
are very similar to that Parkinson disease because of manganese. Now, we will see the impacts of nitrates. The nitrate is also present in ground water and if we use the nitrate contaminated ground water, uh, if the concentration is above certain limit, then also we will be facing some consequences like say blue baby syndrome which we see from this and blue baby syndrome what is this? So, high nitrate and nitride levels may cause a potentially fatal blood disorder in infants under 6 months of age called methemoglobinemia and this is blue baby syndrome and with this disorder there is a reduction in the oxygen carrying capacity of blood which can cause shortness of breath and blueness of the skin of infants or even lead to the infants death. So, this is one serious consequences. Next is your other contaminants which is available in the ground water like bacteriological contaminants like say bacteria, virus, protozoa, helminthes etcetera. So, different types of organisms are present in water that can create different diseases. For example, here say this is water associated diseases, water associated diseases are classified into water borne disease, water wash disease, water based and water related. So, water borne means oral ingestion of pathogens in water contaminated by urine or feces. So, that is say cholera, typhoid, bacillary trachoma. So, there is some example and what are worst diseases. So, this disease spread enhanced by scarcity of water making cleanliness difficult and then uh, trachoma and dysentery are two example that is wa water worst. And then water based water provides habitat for intermediate organism transmission to human through water contact. So, this is your Cheetosomiasis and then water related diseases are caused because of insect or vectors like say mosquitoes that rely on water for habitat, human water contact not needed. Hmm, mosquito can carry this one. So, water is needed for the growth of the mosquito. So, that is the malaria, yellow fever, dengue, etcetera. So, different types of diseases can take place because of this water contamination and then bacterial pathogens if present, they will also create different types of diseases like say salmonella typhi that is, that is typhoid fever like say shigella, so bacillary dysentery and vibrio cholera, cholera and then yersinia enterocolitica gastroenteritis and uh, different helminthes are also may present in water. So, like say uh, antamoeba histolytica, so amoebic dysentery or may giardia lambia, so diarrhea and cryptosporidium, so that can also cause diarrhea. These are the water associated disease, some other water associated disease may take place through viral pathogens like say poliovirus, poliomyositis, hepatitis A virus, infectious hepatitis and adenovirus, respiratory eye infections and others your gastroenteritis and diarrhea. So, those can also happen because of these pollutants. Protozoan pathogens like say who comb that which causes infections of the intestines and iron deficiency or anemia and then roundworm, so uh, ascariasis and then whiform that is trichuriasis. So, these are the water borne diseases. Now, we will see some air pollution and its impact. So, like water air also have some pollutants and then they will be having some impacts as well. So, you see the air pollution may be defined as the presence in the air that is outdoor atmosphere of one or more contaminants or combinations thereof in such quantities and of such duration as may be or tend to be injurious to human, animal or plant life or property or which unreasonably interferes with the comfortable enjoyment of life or property or conduct of business. So, this is the uh, impact which the air pollutants can have and different air pollutants which we have discussed in the previous class was particulate matter, then socks, nox, carbon monoxide, lead etcetera, ozone 
all those things we have discussed in the previous class. So, all those having some impacts like say particulate matter, particulate matter uh, initially it was um, suspended particulate matter SPM, now it is defined redefined and uh, PM 2.5, PM 10 like this definition was given depending the severity of the particulate matters, variations in the severity of the particulate matters. Like example here, the impact depends on the particle size, shape and compositions of the particulate matter like large particles trapped in nose, if particle is greater than 10 micrometer, so it will not be able to pass through our nose, nasal systems will that is your tracheobronchial system, they will arrest it. And if particles less than 0 0.5 micrometer, then also it will reach to the lungs. So, particle 2 to 4 is very dangerous, 2 to 4 micrometer that is most effectively get deposited in lungs. So, that is why 2.5 PM 2.5 has been introduced. So, what is the concentration of that? That is a major concern now. And because of this particulate matter, different health impacts we can have like say aggravated asthma, increase in respiratory symptoms like coughing and difficult or painful breathing and then chronic bronchitis, decreased lung functions and premature death even. Then PM also have particulate matter have some other impacts as well on vegetation, on visibility it has like say visibility impairment. So, particulate matter is the major cause of reduced visibility and then aesthetic damage should a type of PM stains and damages stone and other materials including objects such as monuments and statues. And then you see the deposition of particulate matter on the uh, simmering white marble of the Taj Mahal imparts yellow tinge to the marble surface. So, this is you see this how white it was and now it has converted to the yellowish tinge is there. So, these are the impact of the particulate matter and plant damage can also be possible. Particulate matter can form a film on plant leaves in interfering with photosynthesis and plant growth. So, these are the impact of particulate matter and then we will see the impact of carbon monoxide. So, if carbon monoxide we know that is generated basically because of the incomplete combustion of carbonaceous fuels. So, mostly it comes out from the vehicles at least 77 percent it comes from the motor vehicles and this is produced by incomplete combustion and insufficient oxygen, low temperature, short residence time and poor mixings are responsible for it and you see carbon monoxide can be a danger and how it can be let us see. So, we know that in due to the presence of carbon monoxide our hemoglobin function is affected carboxy hemoglobin is formed. Okay. So, that uh, how much carbon dioxide is entry getting entry into this into our human body or how long we are exposed, what is the concentration of the carbon monoxide in the environment that will influence the severity or its impacts. So, it is a colorless and odorless and when inhaled binds to hemoglobin in blood to form carboxy hemoglobin reducing the oxygen carrying capacity just I have discussed and brain function reduced heart rate increased at lower levels and asphyxiation occurs at higher levels. So, if concentration is very high that can be asphyxiation or shash road. Okay. So, now we can calculate the carboxy hemoglobin concentration in our blood if we know the concentration of the carbon monoxide in the environment and our exposure to this environment. So, or the atmosphere. So, percentage COHB that is equal to your carboxy hemoglobin as a percentage saturation and then CO is the constant carbon monoxide concentration in ppm and this gamma and T gamma is equal to 0 0.402 to the power 0 0.402 our inverse. So, this is a constant and beta is 0 0.1 percent per ppm of CO and T is the exposure time in hour. So, these gamma and beta are constants and T is the exposure time and C o is the concentration of carbon monoxide. So, this is empirical relationship people have worked on it and they have found that this relationship can be applied to find out the concentration of uh, carboxyhemoglobin in the human blood 
if someone is exposed in the CO environment. Now, you see this is the uh, different impact due to the CO concentration. So, this is 15 ppm graph, this is 30 ppm, 100 ppm, 300 and 600 ppm, this is your exposure and this is your percentage carboxy hemoglobin. So, if exposure is less, then then no symptoms up to this. So, 100 ppm, so exposure is less no, but if exposure is more then also the lower ppm also can give us some impact up to, so up to 50 or 30 there is no impact as shown here. So, up to 50 there is nothing, but uh, per percentage carboxy hemoglobin is 10 it is shown here, so no symptom, but above this if it is more than that 50 and then your duration exposure time will give the severity of the impact. Okay. Somewhere even we can have death even, we can have coma, we can have vomit collapse or we can have throbbing headache a reduced mental acuity. So, these are the symptoms we can have at different concentration and exposure time. Now, we will see the impact of shocks and NOx. So, shocks we know that sulphur is present in many fossil fuels and when it is combusted the shocks are generated and it has some impact. What are those? Say high concentration of SO2 can result in temporary breathing impairment and long term exposures to high concentration of SO2 in conjunction with high levels of particulate matter include respiratory illness, alterations in the lungs, defenses and aggravations of existing cardiovascular disease. So, these are the impact and NOx particularly NO has few health impacts, but is oxidized to NO2 and NO2 irritates lungs and promotes respiratory infections and NO2 reacts with hydrocarbons in presence of sunlight to produce smoke. So, those are the impact of SOX and NOx you see here this hydrocarbons, NOx and sunlight it give us the photochemical smoke or oxidants. So, that hazy environment will be generated accident may take place. Okay. So, primary oxidants produce that ozone, formaldehyde and your peroxyacetyl nitrate or PEN. So, these are some impacts of uh, NOx that, that is called the photochemical smog. Ozone can have some impacts as well. So, increased incidence of respiratory distress due to the presence of higher concentration of ozone and repeated exposure to ozone increased susceptibility to respiratory infection and lung inflammation and then aggravation of pre existing respiratory diseases such as asthma and decrease in lung function and increased respiratory symptoms such as chest pain and cough. And ozone also affects vegetations and ecosystems and reductions in agricultural and commercial forest yield uh, this one 0 0.5 billion per year in US alone and reduced growth and survivability of trees or seedlings. So, this is also a problem for the plants and then increased plant susceptibility to disease pests and other environmental stresses. Okay. So, these are the impact of the ozone on, on uh, living organism and lead has some impact also. So, this accumulates in the blood, bones and soft tissues and adversely affects the kidneys, liver, nervous systems and other organs. And Excessive exposure to lead may cause neurological impairments such as seizures, mental retardations and behavioral disorders may be a factor in high blood pressure and subsequent heart disease. Next we see the impact due to soil pollution. Soil pollution refers to the contamination of soil with anomalous concentrations of toxic substances. It is a serious environmental concern since it harbors many health hazards. For example, exposure to soil containing high concentrations of benzene increases the risk of contracting leukemia. The root cause of soil pollution is often one of the following. There may be many reasons out of those some may be agriculture that is excessive or improper use of pesticides. So, pesticides if we use so that will come into the soil and it will be passing through the food. Okay. because it is conservative pollutants and then it will be accumulated in the plants and plants to food and it will, do, it will be coming to the food chain. 
and then excessive industrial activity, ex industrial pollution will also come into the soil and it can contaminate and poor management or inefficient disposal of waste that is also another reason for the pollution of the soil and because of this soil pollution our food is polluted, okay, water ground water is polluted. So, as a result our health will be affected and for examples of uh, soil contaminations direct impact like say arsenic in rice. So, recent report says that arsenic is not only available in ground water, it is also coming into the rice as well. So, because of the contamination of the soil and ground water both and heavy metals pesticides in vegetables. So, in many vegetables we are getting heavy metals and pesticides, this is because of the soil contamination, water contamination etcetera. Now, due to noise pollution, what are the impacts of noise? We will discuss here. So, due to the noise we may be annoyed, it may be sometimes it may be unbearable, we may be irritated. Okay. So, there will be some physiological effects as well, loss of hearing can also be and human performance can also be decreased because of the high noise level and nervous systems it causes pain, okay, ringing in the ears, feeling of tiredness thereby affecting the functioning of human system even sleeplessness, it affects the sleeping thereby inducing the people to become restless and lose concentration and presence of mind during their activities. You know sleeping is very very important for good health, so if you have 6 hours of sound sleep, so almost most of the diseases we can expect that will not be in the health may be. Okay. So, damage due to material, the buildings and materials may get damaged by exposure to infrasonic or ultrasonic waves and even get collapsed. So, that can also be some impact of the noise. Now, these are the impact due to air pollution, water pollution, soil pollution, noise pollution etcetera, but now we will be discussing the impacts of pollution in global scale that is global warming. As you know the atmosphere has different layers, so troposphere which is associated with the earth surface up to say 10 to 14, 10, 14 kilometer then, then we are having stratosphere, then we are having mesosphere, then it is ionosphere. So, troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, ionosphere and we have one tropopause here and we have a stratopause here. So, at stratosphere when it starts then uh, at this case we have ozone layer, okay, the stratosphere ends and mesosphere starts we have one ozone layer. So, this ozone prevents the passage of UV lights from the sun okay, and this UV light has good potential to be absorbed by the different gases like say carbon dioxide etcetera and as a result the gas will be heated up. So, atmosphere will be heated up and global warming will take place. So, this is the mechanism through which global warming takes place and this is because of the presence of the different pollutants in the in the atmosphere. So, above certain limit if these are present then certainly the global warming is obvious. So, that what we are going to discuss. So, ozone sits in the upper atmosphere and absorbs ultraviolet radiations and other types of solar energy that is harmful to humans, animals and plants that just we are talking about here the ozone is there and CFC and halons cause chemical reactions that break down ozone molecules reducing ozone's ultraviolet radiations absorbing capacity. So, ozone now UV rays are coming at the troposphere where carbon dioxide are generated and concentration of carbon dioxide, the water vapor, okay, methane, nitrous, nitrous oxides all those things are getting more and more concentration. So, these some of these gases most of almost all of these gases have capacity to capture that ultraviolet rays and then to increase the temperature of the atmosphere. So, carbon dioxide spreads around the planet like a blanket and is one of the main gases responsible for the absorption of infrared radiation okay, felt as heat and this blanket warms the surface of the earth and protects it from the cold air above it. So, global warming takes place. So, these are the different impacts due to the pollution on our on human health, on other animals and on the overall environment. Thank you very much for your patience.